What's going on, guys? Just got done with the watch party and the flank in day one. I'm joined with Ben Genesee. Ben, say hi for the intro. What's good, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, guys, today, uh, didn't show many clips on the flank today. Definitely, uh, obviously, the at events, it's harder for us to show clips. I'm not at my normal setup, and uh, the days are a lot longer than usual. We don't just have two, three match days. Um, we had four matches today. I tried to do, I, I did pull up a few clips um uh at the end of it so if we did break down some of the gameplay but i'm going to do the best i can throughout the weekend to get as many clips uh, as possible for you guys and try and break down gameplay but nonetheless i always want to get a show up for you guys just so for people who weren't able to watch the matches just so you know what the hell happened today and we can give our thoughts real quick but um i know sometimes at events people get really mad that we do quicker shows and we don't show as many clips so um, please don't be too mad at me. Uh, we also did, uh, I did an IRL stream and I have Val's editing that video as well. So we're going to be uploading that. So if you guys missed the IRL stream, we had a lot of fun with that. So I'm really excited for you guys to see that one. But as always, man, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you guys so much for all the love and support. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe on the video and, uh, hope you guys enjoy the show. And of course, we'll see you guys in the watch party tomorrow, man. The, the weekend's only going to get better from here on out. I think today was kind of probably going to be the biggest news of the weekend. But moving forward, I think uh, this weekend's going to have great matches, man. There's going to be a lot of great moments. So we're really excited for it. I'll see you guys in the watch party. Uh, and make sure to tune in to the flanks this weekend, man. We'll be, we'll be live every day on Twitch after the watch party uh, doing the flanks. And shout out to my man Vows because he be uploading everything super quick for you guys. So hope you guys enjoy the show. And, uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Welcome to another episode of The Flank. I'm joined by the one and only, the human turret, the world champ himself, one of the best ARs ever do it. Give it up for Sam LaRue Octane. We got the world champ as well over here. Some of the best analysis of the game. Give it up for Christopher Duarte Parasite. And then, of course, we got the one and only, the executive producer of The Flank, Ben J. Nassim. We are here live at Major 3 Toronto. We're all here together. No Pat for today's show. He will be joining us for the rest of the weekend. Uh, but for uh, for Pat Thursday, he wasn't he able might, to be he here today. He might join us mid-show. And also, you never gas yourself in the intro. Mm -mm. I don't I don't guess. And we my got pen. Thomas Suma, Paparato, oh, multi-champion, <laughs> multi-MVP. Five different titles, Call yeah. of Duty, <laughs> game changer, yeah. savior Mr. of the Call of Duty about. content. Well, Absolute yes, legend. That's a pretty good guess. The uh, stallion. Guess, guess. One time, four and 23. One time, four. <laughs> 23 one time only once so one time four and 23 one time oh and 12 yeah oh shit oh jesus uh sam called us straight here i'm trying to follow up your trade uh but yo it's been a it's been a great day today man uh, we had four matches today it was a very long day we've been here since what 11 a.m 11 mm, you've been here since, since nine, fucking actually. forever uh but it feels good man, to have all of us here together and once pat gets here too it'll, it'll be really cool uh you guys are incredible in the watch party as well we got a lot of energy in here uh, have, right now for the show case on today but he missed his flight yeah case on also missed his flight as yeah, well I don't know if Kason's the right person to bring on the flank because he'll just start <laughs> nah, chirping it everybody. Been great. It would be great for the face series. Um, but, yeah, uh, we're going to hop right into it today, guys. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll show some clips, guys. Uh, we are at a major. There's a lot more series. So you guys know at events we usually uh, don't show as many clips. We just want to give you guys a quick recap of the day and, and kind of give our thoughts and, and keep it pushing because we got another long day tomorrow. So I appreciate everybody who's supporting and showing love. We're not going to waste any time. I say we hop right into it, and we switch on over to the first series of the day. We had the one and only, the New York Subliners, going up against the Los Angeles Thieves. Uh, oops, sorry. Clicked the info, uh, intro by accident. Not my normal setup here. Uh, we got LA Thieves losing 1-3 to the New York Subliners. Uh, LA Thieves was able to take the map number one, but... After that, it was pretty comfortable for New York. We could scroll down, take a look here at the stat sheet, and Jesus fucking mod on. It is Dan Ghosty saving LA Thieves from a red carpet. I mean, you guys know this is Sam squad. Sam, you come from the Thieves. We have to start with you. What happened today, Sam? What they got, happened? They bro? got pooped on, bro. They got fucking they got pooped, pooped on. on bad. Uh, I mean, the series went exactly how I, pretty much everyone thought it would, to be honest with you. Um, first map, New York kind of just tossed. I think they were up like 80-something, 70-something like that. Um, so, I mean, if they, they made it look a little bit better than it actually was, but they were just getting slain into oblivion, to be honest. I think Dante had a very good series today. That's something that we've been waiting on, and uh, myself, I've been pretty hard on him, but he played super well today. Maybe that's my fault. 
Um, Paco obviously played unbelievable. And then Kiz had a couple moments. I think it was map four where he was just like way. Taking really good routes. Yeah, he was making plays. Yeah. So, I mean, the series is pretty cut and dry. Um, yeah, there's not really anything crazy. Yeah, uh, I definitely think Bulldogs has been playing really, really good for these guys. I, I can't say enough about Paco, bro. I mean, Paco, is just especially when you get to land, I just feel like he just kicks up. Not really too sure why New York is having a hard time closing out some of these hard points sometimes. Because even in the first map, I mean, this could have been a 3-0. Um, the first map, they had a fat lead, like Sam said, and, and they just kind of threw it away. But uh, I, I want to highlight Sib a little bit. I feel like Dante, we've, we've talked about it a little bit during the watch party, but he really stepped up today. And I think that's the Sib that we're looking for, right? Like, we want to see Dante come and slay and drop 1.3s like and this. That's what and they drop, pick him up on the team for. Right, that's yeah. his job. That's why they have him here. So to see Dante come out and, and do that was was cool to see. But, Duarte, what did you think about the about the series today? Uh, Ghosty had an absolutely insane bounce back, like, midway through the first First map and that pretty much saved them from getting 3-0'd. I did expect this to be a lot closer than it was. I pretty much had it in my head that if they didn't win the first map, which they did, um, they would probably get closed out real quick. But um, the S and D was where it was kind of surprising. I feel like they had a couple moments where they could have potentially um, won that search. Right there was like a big round where Sib stair glitched the center staircase and. After that, or not stair glitch, he, he uh, one weighed the smoke. I was going to say, do I, have to, do I have to red card? No, do no, I have to I'm throw sorry. a red card Before out? Yeah, I saw <laughs> stairs and I just immediately thought stair glitch. But he one weighed the smoke. And then after that, like New York just like strung every single other round together. But I mean, clear cut win for the New York. Uh, hopefully they can continue this form because I'm hoping for a very competitive Sunday. Um, as we do expect them to make it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, Ben I mean, Jay, talk, talk to me, Ben. What you think? Clips, I mean, my, my, you guys kind of covered pretty much everything I thought. This was a pretty good tune-up for New York. Uh, I thought, again, to, to echo the points earlier, like Dante playing the way he played today, they're going to have a really good chance against FaZe, and they've already beat them uh, once this season, although it was online. Uh, I think for Thieves, you can't be too disparaged after today. I thought that they uh, showed a lot of uh, heart uh, throughout the series, but I think the slaying difference was definitely noticeable. I think, obviously, the inconsistency of players like Joe and Nasty definitely showed up today. Um, but I think Thieves, if you look at the loser's bracket, they're positioned well, I think, to go on a little bit of a run, starting off with Boston tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I want to swap on over. This is the 2v4, because I think we can all agree, this was like the game changer, I think, in this yeah. series. Because yeah. LA Thieves, they come out, they win the first map, and if they come through and, and take a 2-0 lead here, like this whole series would be completely different. This is where it kind of falls apart for them. This is a round where it's a 4v2 situation. LA Thieves are getting this bomb down. I mean, they have an opportunity here to tie it up at four, but look at what Dante does here. He just kind of sneaks through the smoke. He w he wiggles his way through. But while he does that, the Bulldog was able to find a couple kills there as well, making the play, which I don't even know. How did Kismet get two kills there? He just passed P3, it looked like. Yeah, but it, I, I'm surprised. I mean, it was a good play from him, obviously. But while Dante's making plays here... Kismet, he wins a big fight onto uh, number three right there. That was nasty. Um, uh, isn't nasty in the God Heady there? No, nah, I think he was uh, moving. He was it, pushing up. Like, he kind of threw away his life. Yeah, he did. He kind of trolled yeah. there. Yeah, he didn't really need to overextend that far. I think he could have just held the head glitch down there. We know it's super OP. And, yeah, he just got caught with his pants down. Yeah, and I feel like this was definitely uh, a game changer here because then Dante, he comes down, and the guy on bomb gets gets taken out, and then it's a 2v1 situation. Dan's all by himself, and what looked like a round that should have went Thieves' way turned into a 5-3 lead for the New York subliners. So, uh, if you're an L.A. Thieves fan, that was a tough round today. Uh, it was probably the biggest round of the day. Um, but other than that, I mean, there was uh, some other clips uh, from the series. Uh, I was going to pull up from the control. I mean, Paco went on a 15-kill streak at the end of the control. <laughs> that was absurd. Um, I mean, that was fucking crazy. I think the way that Paco is able to maneuver around invasion is pretty typical. Um, and then in the Vista hard point, I just had Kismet. Just the routes that he's able to take. Yeah. He was just able to constantly just... Be that guy to just take that route early and flip spawns and get to that next hard point. I mean, without the Bulldog doing what he does, uh, I, I just think the game would feel a lot harder for New York. It's just the little things that, that Kismet 100%. does. 100%. Um, but it was a good series nonetheless. I mean, guys, you have any other thoughts uh, on the series uh, between New York and LA Thieves? I thought LAT would put up more of a fight, to be honest. I feel like, you know, we were going to go over all these series, but I feel like Ravens were actually the team that looked the best against the top four when in, like, in playing their matches. But I thought LAT would be that team. Um, to really, really like stick it to New York and, and push this at least to maybe like a game five. 
But uh, even then, on the maps they did lose, like they were like washes. It's just like, the controls, dude. They have yeah, no yeah. way. When, when they extend the series, I, I have no faith in them right now to win a game three, which like, is weird because they they were very good at it for like stage one and two. It was like something they could fall back it's, on. They gotta figure out what the, with this personnel lineup because it's killing them. They, they also just play invasion badly. control like all the time. Well, they don't play um, high rise or they vetoed high rise, I believe, in this series. But um, that's because New York's good. Take a look at yeah, the case, man. New York's not gonna pick Karachi. This is so. just the Bulldog taking initiative here, and he does this a couple times where it's just 35 seconds. He's already out, man. He's he's already just making a play towards next. And you see the spawns coming after this. Boom, LA Thieves flip, right? New York get those new spawns. And, I mean, this Vista hard point from uh, from the New York subliners was was pretty typical, man. I mean, they, they were making it look easy. Um, and then Kismet, again, it's just the little things that he does, bro. It's, it's typical. It, I feel like just having somebody like that on your team, just enables people like Sabin Hydra to get kills That's and, just and do what they do. That's just stuff you don't see on scoreboards that like people don't really think about. Like 100%. he solo wins them two rotations for this game. Oh, hundred percent. This, this P three and then the next P five or the next P five is just all Kismet. Yeah, no, Kismet makes the makes the play for sure. But uh, New York, they go on the board. Who do they play tomorrow? Who's New York playing tomorrow? Uh, I think they play. Or they play Saturday. They play Saturday. They play they Saturday won. It's phase. Um, so thieves phase. play. Thieves play tomorrow. Thieves play Boston <laughs> tomorrow. Yeah, uh, we'll see what happens with uh, with that. Obviously, we have some elimination games tomorrow, so that's going to be a good one. Uh, LATs fall to New York. Uh, not really a surprise there. Then we go on to the second series of the day. Then we have Atlanta Face going up against hilarious. the Miami oh, Heritage. They got their one, bro. They got their, they one. Got their one. They got their one. They got their one. Yeah, this one ended in a 3-1 finish for Atlanta Face. Miami Heretics finally are able to win a map on land. Um, it took them a while. It took them three <laughs> stages to finally win a map on land. But Jesus! <laughs> oh, mother! It's the Miami Heretics getting absolutely smoked in a slaying department. I think that's no shock to us. I think watching the series, we all knew that Miami just couldn't keep You're up the with the You the Rail over for, like, was it 55? One, two, three. got 59 in okay, It wasn't maps. 55. His line was 50. And I thought because Rial was the only one shooting back on line. I thought he was just going to, you know, just get killed. I thought they were going to lose, but he was still going to get kills. That was not the case today. Real struggled today. So uh, yeah. Yeah, I uh, I ran these guys earlier when they were coming back, and I think they felt like, and we probably agreed that I think they were definitely kill horn a little bit of points in this series. You know, improve hopping on some of those hills once they get the kills and so stop giving off white time. And I think the S&Ds are still a little bit iffy right now. Mid-round decisions that they were so good at, they haven't really been hitting that much the last couple of times. So they got a day or so to clean up S&D before they play New York, in which S&D will be important. Bro, I'll be honest. I think... I mean, we, we've been big on Sin, but Abe, for me, Abyss has been stage three MVP. Bro. Like, on, like he has been fucking unbelievable the entire stage. Mm -hmm. And to see him, like, I granted it is Miami. It's kind of a freebie. But, like, the, the shit that he was doing today was, like, genuinely unbelievable. Yeah, when like, you're, he was not losing a When your front man yeah. is literally popping two to three, like, at a time, like, there's no way you lose. Like, it, it, it's important for, like, obviously everyone on the team to play well. Or, like, when we're high on Chris and he's playing well or, or Cell or whatever. But I feel like when Abe is on, like... They're, like, the other three, like, make the game hard for other teams. Like, obviously, they're playing super well. But when Abe is on, this team is, like, genuinely unbeatable. Because yeah. Yeah. this is what Chris said, bro. If your entry is giving you two and getting a third guy weak, like, what the fuck? Are you, what are you doing? Well, like, it's just the role that he plays. Like, if he's dropping numbers like this at the pace that he's playing at. The map's at, open at all times. Yeah, it just, yeah. It just it feels a lot easier. Just the, the, His teammates probably just feel like the map is just so much easier to maneuver around. But, yeah. Ben, what did you think about the series today? What Atlanta phase? And, I, just, uh, I just said that in, like, 30 seconds ago. <laughs> what? Oh, you did? Oh, wait, who didn't go? You're did you guys all go? You're telling me I'm the one that's faded? Um, My bad. What? I mean, one thing to mention hey, hey, is like... I'm executive producing, managing 80 million things. <laughs> hey, I apologize. Okay, well, okay. one, one thing to Fuck mention... It, one thing to mention... Or, one thing to mention in relation to at least the Karachi and like the, the, the kill whoring stuff like that, they definitely were at times like... Uh, misreading the situation where they were just like getting excessive amounts of kills and not really translating at that time. But I feel like you run into those issues when you play like the original MW2 maps. And it's because of like the weird spawns and like the splits that you get that you don't really see on like the new maps. So that's why whenever you see um, like FaZe play a map like Rio, it's like all those they're excessive slamming. kills they get, they're translating into like massive point leads. But uh, it, it, it does happen quite a bit. I mean, it happens on sub base too. I remember New York getting allegations of kill whoring on like sub base and stuff like that. But like, it, it's just the way those maps play. They were getting a lot of excessive kills and like trying to play perfect COD to the point where sometimes they just weren't getting hill time. But like, bro, look at these slaying margins. <laughs> they yeah. by this is fucking and... absurd. There's, yeah, 79. 79 is the, is the control in the Rio were f really bad in this one. Because I know bro. they also outside in first map. Like, I, I get that you, you know, there's probably maps that Miami don't want to play for hardpoint, but just voluntarily giving FaZe Rio in any situation is just fucking insane. 
Like yeah, that like wasn't you, the best. Idea. I don't care what odds that you think you have of winning whatever map you're choosing to veto over Rio. You're not winning Rio. Like it's zero. Per, it's literally zero percent chance right now. Yeah, no. Nah, and uh, leaving it in is just insane to me. Yeah, uh, any hope for Miami moving forward in the rest of this tournament? Well, they play Vegas, they play Vegas. tomorrow, so that should be interesting. But you, who do you guys have? I mean, I, I feel like Vegas. I mean, we'll obviously get to the predictions uh, at the end of it, but I think Miami can match up well against Vegas. It d- d- depends what kind of Vegas we get tomorrow. To be I just we, I, rail we, just, we just don't really know, yeah, like, don't know the enough. ceiling of Vegas with Johnny. Um, they won their first series back, but it was against Boston. The problem with Vegas is their S&D was already kind of ass, and – with uh, adding a new fourth, and then even in their match, I think against Boston, they did they, they lose lost the search? search. Yeah, they lost the first search to Boston. Mind, mind you, um, I think Miami have a chance here if they can take that second map and maybe like push a game five. I so. just trust no one on this team that isn't real. That's the only reason yeah. I'm with Vegas because I could trust like Geo and Attach or even Johnny to have like a crazy pop off. Nero can do it as well, but like I, I can't trust anyone on this team that's not named Real. So yeah. I, I feel like for that reason, you have to go Vegas. Yeah. Um, and why didn't they play the hundred point jingle today, Sam? They just know. don't fuck with. with they LAT, only do it bro. to the thieves. They just don't like LAT. That's all it is. Yeah, no, that's they actually kind of crazy, LAT, bro. Though. That was, I thought I, I was I'm excited putting in a for formal jingle. complaint with Daniel said. <laughs> yeah, uh, Faze made that last map look uh, really easy. Miami was only able to get seventy two points in that last one, so really good plays from them. Uh, any final thoughts on on the mismatch here? Atlanta phase in, in I mean, Miami. Miami's S and D looked good for what it's worth. I yeah, thought it was like won a, one map. It was a pretty. I mean, it was one map, but it was a clinical. Yeah. Like it was a good. It was a good map. It was, it was a, good a great map for Miami. I, I think phase S and D has been a little bit iffy the last two weeks. Well, Zach, had, Zach didn't have. I think it was yeah. Zach today that didn't have. He went like two and yeah, eight, Zach two and seven. Zach like going, they, they got some stuff they got to clean up in search because again, against New York, the last time New York beat them, they lost two S and Ds to them. So well, that was like fucking four months ago. As like a. Two months ago, but my point is, like, still, they got to improve the certain. They were, yeah. listen, they were owing to a control going through the first two series last event. They're pretty good at cleaning stuff up. And the benefit of winning winners round one is you just do it's scripts. Day off. Off, so. Yeah, I feel like that day off is is good for the mental, bro. It's They can chill out. They can watch some games and clear their heads and get back to it. There's nothing better than winning winners round one. When you lose winners round one in the beginning of the weekend, as a player, Ben, I can't really speak for you because you're terrible. Uh, as a player, right? Like you're a fucking terrible kid. You went 4-23 in a map. And what happened in the next three maps? Uh, double digits in the search, like 30 in the yeah. uplink or so whatever the fuck it was. What fucking talking about? How is Ben talking with all that dick in his mouth? I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know I really don't know. I don't know how Interesting. Um, but we all know that feeling of lo- losing winners round one. I feel like we've all yeah. been there because that's the series you game plan for. Like you're like that's your focus for like the week before the the tournament. Like you're you're just hard focused on that round one, and when you lose it, it feels like shit. Yes. Yeah, no, hundred percent, bro, hundred fucking thousand percent. Uh, let's hop into the next series um, and see what's going on here. We had the Toronto Ultra going up against the Seattle Surge, probably the worst series of the day. Uh, easily the worst. Easily the worst. Series, but, uh, um, Toronto I might have creamed out during this series. <laughs> I don't yeah. think you watched this shit. I'm not gonna lie, but Ben J was taking Papanya ribs for gifted. He was on the floor. I saw him looking the wall in the Bro, middle of the watch party. Looking walls hard before this day started. <laughs> um, but Toronto Ultra, they get the three-one victory over the Seattle Surge. The only map that Seattle was able to take was the control, and they were just able to sneak an offense on invasion and just pretty much went out on their D's. So it was uh, it was a Pretty clinical control, but, I mean, just watching the series, this this was a mismatch, man. Seattle can't keep up with the guns of Toronto. We'll scroll down, take a look at the stat sheet. Jesus, Jesus fucking model. Somebody it's a booza. Somebody, somebody please somebody help this guy, guy a booza. We'll start with Seattle, and then we'll go to Toronto, but let's start with Seattle first. A booza, right? They move him back to an AR, and he looks phenomenal. Wow, yeah. shocker, right? Can't believe it. Um, he's doing his thing, moves back to an AR, starts shredding. He had a 1.13 today, but everybody else on his team really struggled today. The subs, they seemed like they were kind of all over the map. They played a very <laughs> fundamentally sound team in Toronto, and then you have Seattle, who's just kind of hustling and just literally not thinking with their heads. Ben, we'll start with you. Yeah. Uh, what's your initial thoughts uh, on Seattle and the series? I thought Sam put it well during the series. Like, if you think about the match of styles here, Toronto's a pretty, like, disciplined team. They play pretty straight up. Seattle kind of plays super aggressive. The Seattle style did not work today. Listen, I don't know how many events we got to see. Kyler continues to have a big disparity. Now he plays online to land. I think the rest of his team, look, they're, they're young. And, like, for 4 this is his first main stage match as a pro. So that's obviously, you know, a tough one to deal with. Uh Listen, I think for Seattle, there's yeah, some that, stuff. that's actually true. Yeah. I feel like that's uh, he. I forgot it's his first time on land, but keep going. Uh, I think listen for Seattle. There's still some stuff to build on here, and I'm they have an opportunity stage. for a lose bracket run. But 
Uh, I mean, I think this is a Toronto we wanted to see, the Toronto we wanted to see in S&D. And I think if you're an ultra fan here in Toronto supporting the hometown squad, I think you couldn't have, outside of a 3-0, I think you couldn't have predicted a better day for your team, and I think they look good going into the weekend. Yeah, Duarte, what did you think of the series? Dude, these hard points are just a meme. Like, <laughs> looking at the stats, it's just hilarious because you look at, you can, if you want to, like, compare stats of, like, certain players on the uh, Ultra and um, sure duo Seattle, from Dildo. it makes no sense because yeah. they have about the same amount of engagements, but, like, 3,000 less damage a pop. That just tells me that these guys are just sprinting around, and they're not even shooting their weapon. Uh, look at a map four. I mean, this. Yeah, it's exactly. It's it's. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Two K, like just under three thousand damage, and then you look at the whole series as a whole. It's just like they're not shooting their weapons. Apparently, Brezzy has only gone positive in ten of his forty maps that he's played in the league so that far. Is, yeah, he is. He has not been good. He's had like one really good series, Reese, like at the beginning when they first picked up O four, and then after that, he just. Hasn't played well. Mm. Hook. He, he had a, he had a, He's like had some S and D. He had like a two week run. The ten is a lot of a two week run where he played really good. Yeah. But Hook hasn't been good either. He's had some some S and Ds that were O4's, pretty good for a little bit. O four's been pretty decent, and then Abuza's played well. But I mean, two players on this team are just constantly shitting the bed, and uh, <laughs> they, yeah, they just gotta listen. They're about to play the bottom bottom eight teams, so I think there's we'll see how their style works against some of those squads, but. Um, yeah, I think the respawns are real rough today, especially the hard points. And they gotta, well, I mean, listen, that style, that style will work against shitty. It teams. wins in scrims. Right. I mean, that style is not going to work when you play the best teams in the world. Like, that's why I don't understand, like, when some of these teams are practicing online, like, you, you can't just play like that. Like, that's you, why that's why everyone calls Seattle good scrim practice and says it like, oh, like, they, they give the top four a run for their money because in scrims, it's like you're playing so reckless and you're not, like, you're not worried about consequences, whereas, like, in a match, the game is naturally going to slow down. So when they try to play like that, they're, like, they just run into Toronto, yeah. who's just mowing them down. I mean, 100%. the thing is, is like, look at Hook's engagements. He's 60 and 79. Look at Insight's engagements. He has less engagements, basically. Well, he has pretty much around the same engagement. Less engagements, whatever. And mm -hmm. he has, like, 3,000 less damage than him. Yeah. That is fucking insane. That's a run, whole... They're just running into 3,000 damage is a whole map of hardpoint, at the very least, yeah. of yeah. damage. He's not shooting his weapon at all. He's just dying for free. Mm -hmm. Kyler got fried first, man. And, and it's not even just not shooting. Game. He's not hitting nades. He's not hitting stuns. <laughs> like, you're just not contributing at all. You're spawning yeah. up. You're walking forward and just getting mowed down by scrap. Like, I don't – he's just not good. Yeah. Here's Brezzy. I, not I, good. I do want to switch over to the other side with Toronto Ultra. I'll kind of start things off. But, I mean, scrap, uh, again, he had 100 kills in four maps. You can't say enough about him. Today he, he ended off with a 1.54. I mean, just the way he's able to find kills and cut the map. He has so much confidence in game that he's he's just constantly cutting the map. He's constantly the challenging bro. you. Yeah, the awareness, the too. Awareness, dude. He just knows where, where people are coming from, and, and he does a good job cutting the map and, like, taking control of the this map. This guy's ironing out the right time. Yeah, he just he he's good at just get, picking those spots and getting there quickly and, and mowing people down. He, he, honestly, he... He kill whores, very good. He's a very <laughs> good kill whore, um, which is what you want. You want somebody like what that. what he's there for. It's exactly what he's there for. And I think the biggest name today is Dylan Envoy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Dylan has definitely struggled in this stage online, right? We, we can't deny that. Uh, we were kind of just sitting here talking about him a lot, like kind of what's going on with Dylan. Like, I feel like we haven't seen Dylan Envoy really struggle like this before. Uh, and today he was just fucking so good today. Just the, the amount of times he found a two or three piece in the hill – the, uh, the amount of times he, he bailed out his squad or he found uh, he found gaps or was taking the right route. I mean, I just felt like Dylan was all over the map today. And that's where I think this team gets scary. Like, if Dylan Envoy is playing how he played today all weekend, uh, and even Kleenex, Kleenex had a .86, but I think uh, that's the biggest thing today. That guy was frying too. I, I don't know it, how he I had think a it's the fact that Toby didn't play as well as he did online, and they still won a convincing series against, like, yeah. a relatively difficult draw in Seattle. Because, like, I think if you're a fan of Toronto, the biggest issues we had was Jamie and uh, Dylan's hard point was, like, something we, we were concerned about. And then Scrap's S&D. He had 14 in search and today. And Jamie's search. Jamie's and Jamie's search. search. But yeah. Scrap had 14 in S&D today, and Dill had 40 in hard point. So yeah. I think those are, like, two of their biggest issues coming into the event this weekend, and they kind of took care of business in that front, especially against a good S&D team. 14 against Seattle is no nothing to, to shake your hand at. So I think uh, Toronto looked really good. I'm not going to call them an like, event winner good right now, but I think that their showing today was super strong. And the way that, again, like Toby had a poor performance today compared to how he's been playing online, him and Scrap have kind of been one and two. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that he could play down and then still win the series comfortably is a good sign going forward. The only thing I'll say is that Invasion Control could potentially end up in a series against Optic, so 
Let's see if uh, Toronto can work on some of the defense. I think it will because I think also lost Karachi today, yeah. so they might not feel super confident about it. Yeah, uh, for sure. And I, I agree. Some scrap if scrap can play like this in search because that's been Scrappy's like biggest. Uh, yeah. I would say L or what is it? his biggest flaw? Soft, we call his, it soft skill. No soft. flaw, flaw is Achilles heel. For, yeah. see, you call it a soft skill because you call it a flaw, soft skill. You know what I'm okay, soft skill, whatever, Ben James. Ben soft, 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 bro. Leave him alone. Um, I, I definitely what? think. I definitely think. Uh, <laughs> what do you say? Scraps S and D is definitely was was an issue, and even he would say it like online. You know, my S and D's ass. He would go to the same spot every yeah. round, and it was just, if he could continue playing like this, like he, it definitely looked like he was doing some VOD review and and really working on his search game. So if he can. Continue to play like this in search, it'll be pretty typical. But yeah. Chris, you got anything to say about Toronto? No, I mean they they look better um, than they did at home. They obviously had Envoy show up, and Scrap continues to play phenomenally, and he plays really good in the heart and the search. But also, just doesn't really make sense with Scrap. I feel like Scrap has always been a good S and D player. Like back, like even when he was younger, he plays. He still plays like a lot of Chows and stuff like that when he can. So it kind of just doesn't, didn't make sense that. He couldn't put it together and search in this game, but hopefully he uh, continues to do so. I think it's just those MW2 maps, that same point yeah. you had earlier. Because like on maps like Karachi, he does the same shit, and then Invasion, he does the same shit. But when you see him play like Rio, he'll pull out a sub and hit top mid and shit like that. I feel like once like yeah. he plays those newer maps, like Six Star and Rio, and he gets them, like the juices flowing a little bit instead of just running to the same fucking spot every time, I think it like helps him out a little bit. Yeah, he's talked about that on the show. And then Scrab was also asked in a post-post game interview what he thinks about me on the show, and... Uh, he was not a fan, so there's a clip you can go check it out on the flank. Was he cooking us? Oh, he cooked me. Wait, like he cooked you for what? What did you do? Gersh asked him a question, then he cooked me. Oh, like really? That. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm, that's good. Scrap, it's interesting, interesting from Scrab, real. Mm -hmm. I like that. I mean, I nutmegged him yesterday. You, you know what I'm saying? did nutmeg him bad. It was bad, guys. It was, it was bad. It was really bad. It was real bad. bad. You hit him with a reverse last I hit him though. with a fucking reverse. Fuck <laughs> that's you good. doing? Go fuck yourself. But, um, yeah, gentlemen, any final thoughts on the series? Toronto won. Toronto look good. Pretty comfortable. Probably, the. I think... This series kind of bored us today. I mean, yeah. the home fans are probably happy, and they're going to have a rematch against the next team we'll talk uh, talk about, one from the last tournament that they didn't really uh, exceed in. So we'll see if uh, Toronto can get it done against Optic. Uh, yeah, and then, of course, we had the last series of the day. We had the Optic Texas going up against the Carolina Royal Ravens. This one ended in a 3-1 victory as well. A lot of these series look the same, man. The 1-3 control is where the top teams were losing, and then they bounced back in the hard point and, and shut it down. Um, I felt like some of these could have been a 3-0, but we went to that fourth map, and that's where they took it. Can I speak on this one first, if you don't Yeah, we'll get there. Hold on. Yeah. It's a 3-1 <laughs> for Optic Texas. Uh, Carolina, I obviously fall. We'll take a look at the stat sheet here. Um, everybody positive except for Brucey on, on the optic side, but of course Brucey still doing his thing in the damage department. And then on the other side, had a tough series here from Clay, but he did have the most damage. So uh, you know he he was dropping a point eight eight, but Clay does it a lot, bro. He'll be negative but have the most damage on his team because he's their aggressive AR. He's like the one like I. A lot of people were, like, saying that, you know, Clay wasn't, like, an aggressive AR, but that he's been an aggressive AR. Fellows, they're more passive one. I'd rather see Clay be more passive, but that's never been his play style. He's actually always just been a very, like, dynamic player. Granted, yeah. he's not playing his best here. Um, I think the main story for the Ravens here is that Gwen didn't have a good series. Um, he's usually the person that when they play these top four teams, he plays well, or he's, like, playing up to that part to, to kind of, like, will them to win maps in the series. But... Uh, today, Fellow played good, and TJ had he had a relatively decent series, but he also had like a really good four piece that pretty much closed out that control for them. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Ben. What are you gonna say? I think both teams are gonna be like unhappy with how this series played out. I think if you're Carolina, like there were opportunities in both hard points to like win those, and you could have won this three one. I think the flip side on optic, I think you as a team today, like teamwork wise, the way you started some of these maps. I think they played like B-level COD, which is fine if for that first series. You win the first series, you have VOD to watch. But I think some area for improvement out of them. Mm -hmm. What's up, Basin? It's a seam walking in the building. Yeah. Um, I agree. I think I think it is kind of a concern if, if Gwyn's having a series like this. Or, sorry, if Fellow's having a series like this and TJ, and they're both performing like that, and they still weren't able to, to well, really get anything going. I think the other key thing is map two is also crazy because I'm pretty sure Carolina got seven – First Bloods in that map and somehow didn't win half of those rounds. Like, That's insane. That's which is like if you run that map back and they get those First Bloods nine or ten times, they probably win that map too. Yeah, that eight. 
So that's 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 what I'm saying. Just because Chad knows, call me faded. Like I'm just saying on the optic side, I I, I would assume if I'm Kenny right now, I'm you're like, not faded. Chad's just being. I'm like, bro, Chad. we we're watching. We're getting dinner. <laughs> we're gonna have a nice time, and then we're watching VOD. No, and the, we're looking at. I, I'm gonna. I'm honestly gonna fucking plus one you here, Ben. I think that like online, the main concern that we had with optic was the sloppiness of their yeah. series and the slow starts. Yeah. And they showed me nothing in this series to make me think otherwise. 100%. Like they played a really clean series against LAT, their last qualifier match. But both of these hard points, they had to come back. Like the Rio, they were down like 80 or whatever. And then after, I think the first rotation was really a comeback on the sub base, but they kind of locked in and closed it out. But like they're still not coming out, like starting strong in these series. And again, you're playing Carolina, so it's fine. But if you play teams like Toronto or New York or whatever, like sometimes that can come back to bite you. Maybe. So. Uh, it was good. I will say, though, the positive for Optic today was this search. Yeah. The fact that they got first-blooded eight fucking rounds and won this map 6-3 is commendable. That's typical. Especially Invasion. Brandon also had another 1v2. Like he's This yeah. guy has the highest like 1v2 That's percentage. So icy. So icy. Um, on, on the positive note for, for Ravens, I, I think we've all been in agreement here that like when it comes to these bottom teams, their ceiling is that top six, and that's kind of – what they're aiming for, or where we expect these teams to battle out for, and I feel like again, I'll say it again, Ravens has Ravens was the most competitive team against the top four today, yeah. um, and they continue to show that some of their players, fellow especially when they play on land, at least they play. He plays way better. Like he goes from like point eights, like sometimes and sometimes point fives, point sixes to like Just literally a, 1. a steady one It yeah. actually is crazy. I don't know how um, or what it is. As to why he just automatically starts playing better on land, but yeah, he showed up today. TJ showed up today um, with Gwyn not playing well and them still having a relatively competitive series against the top four. I think if Ravens at least continue to play this way, if not better, obviously because they're going to play lower competition, um, they're pretty set to like maybe get that top six again. Like they look like the best bottom team out, out of the teams in the winners bracket at least. You think Carolina? Yeah. Uh, I mean, they, they do look pretty good because I think they just, they're a fundamentally sound team. Like, they, they play good COD, right? Like, that's yeah. that's really all it comes down to. So when they play these teams, like, they're actually making them competitive uh, and they're not getting blown out. But, yeah, I could definitely see Carolina. Make, I mean, I'll be honest with you, Chris. I don't know who the fuck is the, the <laughs> fifth best team. Because we'll see, Changes obviously. Everything. I feel like tomorrow will be, like, a good tell to see kind of where people are at. But, it, yeah, Sam, I feel like it just changes by the day, bro. Like, bro, if Ravens is going to place top six again, and then whenever we ask Pat who's the fifth, sixth best team in the league, he's not going to say it's Ravens just because of their online. There is it's one, just bro. Like, there, there, I don't think that there is one. I know. I know what you mean. I just yeah. think it's funny. It's just like you'll have a team that consistently places in one spot, and they'll probably do it again just by the way they look. So um, rotating flavor they're Like, nah, the they're not top six. Just, like, to, just to talk about some of these, like, 3v4s. I mean, Carolina had a blood here. It was a 3v4 situation. What was the play call here from Carolina? 40 seconds? And one guy runs mid-tank by himself. One guy challenges the, he the back head glitch all the way in the back. Be dumb. He goes down. I didn't have TJ alone on the bomb site by himself. Like, what was what's the thought process here for Carolina? Like, in a three v four situation, or so, in a four v three in favor of Carolina, like, wouldn't you want to just use your numbers and hit out B and just try and single this guy out B? Or I just feel like if you have a blood, I feel like B is a safer bomb site because I feel like if you go towards A here, you kind of get funneled by mid tank. And if you're gonna push out mid tank, at least do it together. I mean, over here, you can just see how they just, they single. Everybody just does something by themselves. One guy mid-tank, one guy s &D, one guy child's fucking beat on, one I guy's mean, backing up blue. To be fair, they ran into a blender, because I think when they killed Shotzi, like, flanking their spawn, they probably thought that A was, like, a free rotation just because of where, like, Shotzi was positioned. Mean Ken. They ex or whatever, Ken. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Um, they thought that A was probably free, so they probably just immediately ran to A and just ran into a brick wall. They ran into a crossfire from Pred and Brandon, so... I mean, they um, just to piggyback off real quick. They the where they killed Ken, they actually didn't have any info at all. Like yeah. you, you can like you're operating under the assumption that that guy pushed through A, but like the fact of where Kenny dies here, they know nothing about the map right now. Oh they, yeah, 100%. they have zero information about what's going on other than where Ken died. If we want to nitpick, and again, we don't we don't can see from their POV. Like maybe once you get this info, the dash is here. You can use some util and maybe stun out like you know. Back tank and maybe give yourself a chance for one in the child, but I agree with you, Sam. I think they just didn't have a lot. They could have just maybe I waited mean, they, a little I, bit I longer think they knew. to make a play. They knew two guys were mid tank. I, mean, I think they saw. Though. They saw. I think they saw Brandon maybe because I because Shotzi, I don't think they saw Ag because Ag's laying down, looking dark here. I don't think they saw him. Yeah, I know they he saw shot. Brandon. He shot though, Sam. Did he, he shoot? Yeah, he shot a hundred percent. I'm pretty sure. Like it, somewhere over here, he he starts shooting. Yeah, see right here, number four. It's it's well, that dashy. Was like, it was, that was dashy. Like, what, they don't know Ag. Later, yeah, right? they don't know Ag. Yeah, so they're just they're just banking. But I'm saying right here, they know one's tractor. They know one guy's mid tank, 
And then I, they kill this guy trying to push through. Trying to push through. It's Kenny. They end up taking him out because Kenny tries to make a play in the pinch. Yeah. And then he dies. So you know they're mid tanky. You know there's one guy B. I, they probably went A because they killed the guy. But listen, they can still go A. Just do something together. I just yeah. didn't. I didn't like how they were just kind of running around. Got overzealous because they saw Brandon and try to get the kill quick. Yeah, um, and that's just kind of like the struggles of of Carolina. Just like when they have numbers, it's just like instead of slowing it down and trying to do something together, it just seemed like they were kind of discombobulated. And that's a good ass map mind. from Optic though. Like a, yeah. especially a map like Invi- like a, a map like High Rise, where if you get eight first bloods and lose around, like a lot of those are trades, and it's super easy to throw your life away on High Rise. Invi- Asian getting blooded eight times and still winning six three is like actually impressive because that uh, map is almost impossible to win without numbers. Yeah, so I, I thought uh, that was a great map from out there. W confidence for Optic because um, you know S and D is sort of a big area of opportunity, and I, I think they had a good showing today. Um, but I, I do think just in general, Optic uh, they got to go back and watch some of the vibe from some of the other maps this series, especially from the respawn because there's a quite a few things teamwork wise that not only did they make mistakes today, but to your point earlier, Sam, they were making them two weeks ago online and were yeah. like. Mm, We'll wait to see. Like, it's good that they have the ice to be able to close these series. Like, you never think that they're actually going to yeah. lose these maps, which is good. But, like, how long? It's kind of like LAT's Game 5 ice. It's like, we were just sitting here thinking, how long is this going to last? And, like, granted, right now, Optic's closing these maps. But, like, some eventually, we're, we're watching professional COD. These teams are going to learn how to close the advantages. Bro, when yeah. you get to the top four versus top four level, like, one yeah. one or two mistakes is deciding every series. Like, you got to play clinical and you got to play perfect. And it's that chase for perfection is what separates... Teams finishing first and teams finishing fourth out of those four teams. Yeah, and I want to talk to you guys about Optics Control, too. What do you think happened today in the control with them? The offenses look too easy for Carolina on the offense. I feel like as the tournament goes on, Optics definitely got to go back and watch this map. Just leaving gaps middle map, especially, like, coming off But they all overextended right. there. Like, here they all over. They all were pushed out. They all were pushed up the map. And then Carolina just took routes left. They got him behind them. And, I mean, look at look at how the map is right now. Like, look at – look. look Look at it. TJ ends up getting streaks here. So this is this is where Carolina kind of just start their momentum. It starts off with an easy defense, but this is where TJ gets a streak here at the end. That streak comes into play later on in this map. But I want to go to the end of the offense that Carolina was able to win against. Yo, what's good, motherfucker? Okay, who we got Patty here? Fucking P. It's the Slayer. It's Patrick Price, the multi world champion, the multi champion, the legend. I, I, I promise. Got- Go I ahead. promise, I didn't time this. I, I just got out of a car. I did not time this. <laughs> but I'm glad to be here to watch Opti lose this map, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> the number one hey. What did you time. think about the, the, the series today, Pat? All of them? No, just this one. Yeah, go no, Pat, give us a rundown on all of them all right. real quick. Uh, okay. Okay. Give us a rundown the, on all the of them. The NY one, mm-hmm. Smoke Show, Hydra, yeah. Unstoppable. Ghosty played well. Uh, he needs better teammates, though. I am in a 1v1 against Ben, by the way, for Breaking Point Fantasy. <laughs> yep. Ben had nasty. So far, I'm smoking him. You're, um, you're in Real, and he got fried so that was, too. Oh, yeah. Also, Real. Hold on. Let's talk about Real. That guy on liner or what? Because I was expecting more out of him. I don't know first, about you guys. I, I, I mean, I show. took the more on him. I picked Brother, him today. Played, I don't know what happened He played against FaZe, bro. I played against FaZe. I think it's his first, on, first match on the main stage that as, is a, true. as a pro. He did play Yeah, but he, phase, can't, but he can't be the worst on it, that team, though. That's what I'm saying. We're gonna he was him, by we're gonna far the true. best online. We're to give him a little bit of room, bro. True. Anyway, we're jumping too far ahead. NY... After you know, after Ghosty did his thing, smoked them. Godlike. Yeah. Um, they're back. They're back. <laughs> um, <laughs> jumping into the next series phase. I mean, you guys know this is Watch. clinical. Mm-hmm. Clinical. Mm-hmm. A BZ looking insane. Clinical. Clinical from the phase squad. Granted, they're playing those bums. <laughs> um, next up, man, 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 man. I tried to warn you guys. I tried. I've been saying it. Envoy, it wasn't happening again, guys. He <laughs> looked phenomenal. He did look good today, Pat. He looked insane phenomenal. today. He looked crazy today. Did you actually warn us? Were you saying he did? Yeah, he did say that. I've that. been telling respect, you that Envoy is not going to keep getting shit on. And I know, but I know they're s d blah, blah, blah. You saw what my co-MVP Scrappy did. 14 and 5 or something. Yeah. <laughs> 100 <laughs> kids frying. Uh, I told you, home, home event buff. Not worried about those guys whatsoever. They will be in the grand finals. And what about the um, last series? Yeah, what'd you think the about last the last series, yeah. Pat? Yeah, what'd you think? Um, you know, I thought it was a good series. Um, Clay, Clay let me down. I was wanting to see a big performance from Clay. I will say, Tyler Fellow, man, he might have to figure something out because he's way better on land so much than he on is land. online. Bro, you think it's a mental uh, I don't know thing, what, Pat? It's definitely mental at this point. 
Yeah. Um, he hates online too. <laughs> Tyler hates nah, online. He yeah. hates it. I, 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 I wish Gwyn had a had a little bit better of a series. It's not like he got shit on, but we kind of spoke about this. Gwyn has to be that guy on this team. That's and if he's not that guy, point, they're going to lose. Um, on the optic side, I mean, Brucey was a little quiet. <laughs> but, I mean, it, it, when you got Pred just doing it all, uh, you know, I, I can't hate on it. Most damage, uh, absolutely frying MVP. All, superstar, by the way. Uh, Ken's comms look good. I heard I heard a couple listening. Kim was Kim was common, um, which is obviously helping Pred be that superstar on his squad. But I was actually surprised they lost the control. I don't know about you guys, but yeah. losing a respawn to well, Carolina. It's funny you say that, Pat, because that's kind of where I was. We're we're right here in the control because I I I thought the. The control here looked too easy for Carolina. I think I'm just going to have to go back and, and rewatch this one. But we can kind of see how this Brown plays out and kind of see how Carolina is able to get the – it's a big win from uh, from Fellow there onto uh, onto that B point. He that was, was the, the entire one, round. Yeah, he kind of opened it up. But even after the fact, you still have two guys from, from Carolina out to play. You got one guy on, on A, got two guys on A, actually, and then the streak obviously comes down and they, they get plundered by DJ. That's where the streak just comes into play so much. Uh, after the ending of that first round, bro, TJ getting that streak really opened things up here. Now, Optics is kind of fucked, but great plays from Carolina here in the offense, and they end up going on and, and winning another offense here as well. But what did you guys think happened there? You think that gunfight that fellow on? I just, mean, that was literally the yeah, entire was round. Right? He got another once, one after that, too. Once that, ra once that kill happened and he just made the decision to call the streak, it, like he got two kills with it and the round was over. Um, that how spawn, did he get there? How did he, he get that he spawn? Ran bottom, he he spawned market and then ran through bottom uh, fountain, it looks like. Yeah, he went through bottom fountain straight through green, and he wins a big one-on-one -on -one here, which I feel like is the best way to cat B on this map, is to find a gap, win that fight on B, get on the point, and force them to run well, at you. he wins you. another fight right here, too, which is big. Because if he doesn't kill this guy, I don't think they win this round. Yeah, uh, definitely uh, a great play there from, from Tyler Fell, and, of course, good streak usage. Um, An actual PJ. effective B streak on this map. You don't see that often. But it was on the offensive end. I know, but you, just, you don't see it often. True. We don't see good streaks often in any map in any game mode, to be honest <laughs> with you. People are terrible with their streaks. They, they are. Um, and then, of course, Carolina. Uh, Optic was able to go back and uh, capitalize on their offense. They were able to get one on the board. But then it was Carolina. They would. They, Carolina closed out on, uh, on an offense, do they not? Yeah, they get another they offense. Off. TJ just gets a four-piece. Um, which, by the way, yeah, TJ looks really, really good today. He, I felt like TJ... TJ's uh, been good for them, to be honest. I feel yeah. like we've been, like, talking about Gwyneth a lot just because he's a flasher, you know, rookie, whatever, but TJ's been just, like, a solid rock for these guys, I think. He's yeah. good. Yeah. Well, I feel like TJ, we've always known TJ's a good player, but, like, fundamentally, yeah, like... Yeah, I feel like we always view TJ as, like, a like a point nine like, role player. We don't ever think of TJ as, like, someone that's super consistent or, like, a main focal point of a roster, and I think on this Carolina team, he is. Mm -hmm. I think he's been, like, very, very underrated for them. Well, he's... I think right now, he's been getting kills. Yeah. Like, if TJ can keep getting kills and, and slaying out, then I, I think it'll help them out tenfold. Um, but, obviously, TJ's been playing really well, so... Huge shout out to T Square. Then we go into the uh, last offense here. This is uh, again on the Karachi. Uh, Optic have an opportunity here to send this into an overtime, uh, and this is where Carolina were able to capitalize on the offense. They were in a blender this round too. They were kind of getting blended here. Optic wasn't really filling in left, and I don't know if that's kind of how things opened up here. But Kenny, he was able to find a couple kills. Which, by the way, Kenny today was fucking phenomenal. I think we should tune into that listening. What Optic? Because I felt like Kenny was, yeah. he was probably like the. I feel like it, it, once you hear these comms, uh, you would realize that nobody Wasn't else that even listened on subbase. Yeah, yeah it, it was. was. Yeah, I'll, I'll pull it up. The one thing I will say about this is like Optic, dude. I feel like a lot of teams just forget to shift left. I feel like they put too much focus on A, and then they the Carolina boys just got that freaking junk spawn, and then they ended up capitalizing on the fact that they got that spawn. Gwen, but, well, Gwen was also Gwen, here for an hour. Yeah, yeah, Gwen was here for so long. Gwen should have just hopped the point here, I think. He should have just hopped the point I right actually, away. I think in the moment, I agree He's with looking you. for a kill. He is looking for a kill, but I like. I feel like because his teammates are in the blender and to see if he, they could get one, I feel like it's almost better for him to stay alive. Got one or his teammates got one before hopping on the point. I think it like it just fucks up the entire plan for optic your own defense because yeah. they think they have them trapped. Yeah, and he gets one tick here before he falls. Yeah. The tick goes yeah. through and then optic swarm in and, and which is why to... I like that he waited so long because it dragged optic away from B because he'd never hopped it. Yeah, definitely don't want to go over 120 seconds as they skim through. Don't want any problems with anybody from the league, but I do want to go to the ending of this round because this is where Carolina 
were able to close it out, and uh, I'm not really too sure how it all unfolded. Oh, I think actually... The, it was the fucking... Is this back what AG was laying down? We yeah, also got some big bang opener out. here to kill this guy. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yes, actually, let me rewind it back 10 seconds. Where, were, where did this guy... Where did Gwyn kill this guy? Right here. So this guy right here, Gwyn, he flanks he, this guy. He kills this guy, and this is a big win. Yeah, he's tagged up a little bit, but like... Getting this guy a ticket immediately just allows your teammates to come and reinforce. He's going to help number five and number seven not I think get Tiege, pinched. like, crawls on AG right here to get the angle to Yeah, and then this is where T just pops off. Yeah, T J. Uh, they I think once you win those fights red, like, Gwyn takes a good route, one. Like, getting to red, coming up behind him, bout, getting the guy out of junk. Like, you have to kill the guy out of junk first. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, yeah, T once, once you kind of get that space red and you're able to take care of that, now it's pretty much a standoff. Optics turtled on hill. And you can see how Carolina was able to uh, swarm in there. Back it up about like 20, 15 seconds. Do you guys just like Optic just in this situation? Right? When Gwyn gets that kill in, in Vending and they're all just flooding over dumpster walls, shouldn't someone just kind of like wrap middle a little bit, try and see someone's at AC Alley? Because Fellows ended up being there. And while he doesn't get the first couple of kills, he ends up like pushing through, going dumpster wall and shooting a guy in the back. And that's actually how it ended up being like actual GG. So, what's your question? So, if fellas sit in top AC right now. They don't. Yeah. They don't ever sit anyone top. They I don't see. sit anyone alley. They all just hop over the dumpster. Mm -hmm. Nobody actually gets any info to fellas here. Which, look at the play that fellas makes. I think what it's was, just more, it's I think because, it's more important for them to get over because they're, yeah. they're trying spawn. to get numbers and, and yeah, one hundred percent. I think if you're coming off spawn, like the last guy off spawn was Bruce, right? Like you, you see your full team like in the point. Like you, he knows it's clear to probably jump over dump and stuff, and he probably feels that pressure coming through front. He's probably just trying to get into that heart, like trying to get there as the quick as possible. The only time you ever take a rouse if you spawn white car. Yeah, they're spawning so close to back alley. It's more important for them to get over the wall. And control of B to at least give yourself one push as opposed to wrapping out. Yeah. No, I don't know about that. You don't, I you think, think every, you think you should own? No, not you. I was talking about what Chris said. Well, um, you, you well think, it depends on the map situation, obviously. But like, right in this situation, if in you're in this situation, yeah, yeah, exactly. I agree. With like, you have zero map control. Like, obviously, if they have some <laughs> semblance of map control where they still got players red and stuff like that, then yeah, spawn up, yeah. take her out. But like, I, 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 I think like if if the team's not like applying that much pressure front yet, I think it's good for somebody off spawn to hit. To go mid, like get mid, yeah, go yeah, top red, I mean, like pinch around. If they don't like, have pressure front, that means you probably have space. So that means you're going to have red control. Then, yeah, repinch mid. That way you can reinforce red from middle. Mm -hmm. But right then and there with how little map control they have, they don't really have a choice. Yeah. They're really mad. Um, Let's go. Let's let's skip and, and go take a look at the SD with FaZe. They're flipping out right now because we didn't go over the map. That FaZe lost to Miami. Like, everybody's flipping out. Sure. Guys, we could, we could go back. It, it, there's no buys. We were just – that map – that series was just boring. Sure, <laughs> so sure. We, sure. We, could, we can watch sure. FaZe give them a freebie. Yeah, we can, we can – Look, guys, guys, they felt bad. They're flipping Miami out. Miami was they flipping so – and fucking 14 or whatever it was on land. They felt bad. I think they the know they know the deal, man. They got to keep the league alive. They got to keep it <laughs> prospering because they're running the league right now. So they wanted to give a charity win to Miami. Um, make sure that organization still, you know, uh, you has gotta, a little you life go left in them. fucking bomb down round. I don't know what round it was. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna, the, I'm, the we're going to skip round? through it. They, for, this is the first round. This is where BZ, bro, BZ was crazy today. He, they lost this map, but he was still cooking. Uh, bomb goes down for Atlanta phase. And we've talked about this retake before, too, with, with uh, when you're trying to retake this site. I feel like the best way to do it is to do what Miami's doing right now. Like, play through mid and play through their side. But they just get pieced here by BZ. What do you think about that? Shit's ass. <laughs> we watch, like... <laughs> We watched like three, four other teams do it. And, and how many fail. retakes have we watched through the pinch? Yeah, but that's because when people go to pinch, Zero. you are they don't not, do it bro, right. They bro. don't do it right, bro. They they are the first. How is the pinch the first to engage? You need to create because a that's not the pinch. The pinch then becomes the guy P three. Well, yeah, I know, but you know what I mean. Like yeah. the guys that are front by the bomb site need to distract the people. That way they split their attention. But if nobody's showing presence front, you know shit. They're all gonna look at the back. I don't know. Like, I just bro. think it's more reliable to just jump over the wall with a fucking smoke and four shreds than it is to, like, actually clear 17 nah, the corners only, of P2 the, and shit. You all would be um, 200 IQ. Like, a lot of people like to play this water. Like, they play that Godhead glitch. You got to smoke that out. Oh, like the back left one? You got to smoke, like, the wood. Yeah, yeah, you need to smoke that would the wood like stairs. That you would need to smoke like the wood play. stairs, then jump off the balcony or yeah. hit the staircase because... The guy pool can't see anything. Yeah, the guy pool is just fucking lost. Yeah. <laughs> this was a retake from Miami. A great retake here. Look at how they end up retaking it. I'm sure FaZe is going to have to go back because, I mean, losing a map to Miami is never ideal, especially a search. I'm sure FaZe is going to go back and, and see what's running. All right. <laughs> you need to lock in, Benjay. What are you doing? 
Uh, take a look how Miami does it. They 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 go back here. They go three back. One guy slow plays middle. I love that lucky slow played middle and didn't move. I like that he waited because he ended up catching Sim slipping. He kind of felt that pressure. He knew somebody was going to late pinch from from phase when some of those kills start going down. But great retake here from uh, from Florida. Anything in phases set up that you guys can critique or maybe think they could have done differently here? Uh, yeah. Maybe just Number Simp eight. not pinching. MC. Number eight. He could, like, they already have a guy watching the pinch. No, obviously, it's not like the, the full pinch. I don't know yeah. what number seven is doing. Nah, be, the, because yeah, the reason why hard. MC's turning those because nobody has blue. Nobody yeah, has, I know. Like, yeah. Number seven yeah, is Simpson in the depths of hell. Yeah, I don't know why Sims in the depths of hell. Yeah, number eight really. just needs to commit to the wood stairs. Number five and six either need to play onto the, like, site or they need to, like, try to, like, wrap out water and get out of that spot. Obviously, they're paranoid of recrossing, like, the mid-stairs because they feel like they're going to get held. But they can easily have, like, MC watch over them while they, like, kind of get out through Tiki. Yeah. Um, yeah. That probably would have been the better play. But instead, like, the, the guy mid-dies, right? And then they feel that pressure to, like, hit a route. And then MC is essentially useless because the only place he can watch, they're running, it, like, forward and pushing it out. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was a good play by Miami, but I feel like FaZe definitely could have done something better there. Yeah. No, I, I do like the I do like the play, though, for Miami. I think Lucky slow playing mid was a good play. And, um, and of course, just them using their numbers. They also knew a BZ likes to bite here would. So I think kind of staying on your iron there uh, from Metals, it was a good play for Metals to, to hold his iron and wait for Abe to come flying around the corner because he was definitely feeling himself. He, was, uh, he needed a little bit of a heat check there. Um, so that was a good retake uh, from Miami. And then... I want to go to the 2 1 round. This is actually a really big clutch here from Miami. Um, this ended up coming down to the wire. I think it was Meadows who ended up getting the uh, the clutch here at the last second. But Atlanta Phase, they trying to hit through mid and try and counter the mid push. You can see Miami, they kind of slow played it this round a little bit and they went over towards that, that A bomb site. But I think uh, they end up trying to make a play here towards that. Well, let me skip with my arrow keys. What's going on here? Uh, Miami, they try and make a play over towards this uh, A site. Yeah, BZ, he's able to find one, but Abe, he kind of gets stuck here. Miami, they end up rotating the bomb here, do they not? I believe they rotate the bomb over towards B here because BZ's kind of here. He's, he gets the blood. Real was able to get the kill. Yeah, so this is where the rotation begins. So because Real wins that fight mid and he pushes through B, now he has that information. They know BZ's on that site. So Miami knows by rotating over to this site that they're going to have numbers here. Uh, and you can see Real just off that kill. He was able to get aggressive on B. It was just good ankle breakers from, from Miami. They caught face slipping here. Um, and, and that kill from Real really opened things up. And this got a little scary because of BZ. He hits the flank. He's able to find one. Now it's a 2v2 situation. Meadows, he ends up picking up Abe. It was a good trade from him. I thought for a second nobody was going to trade that. Also, I'm surprised that a BZ turned around and went back towards mid. But you can see... Uh, FaZe tries to hop the bomb, MC tries to look over him, and Metals just wins a great 1v1 against MC and is able to kill that guy off the bomb as well. So uh, I like to try the effort there from FaZe, but uh, anything you would have done differently on their end? I think BZ maybe thought somebody else was going to be there, so he tried to get out. I don't think he expected these guys to be middle. I think the readjustment of them going mid was was a little sketchy because they can't see the bomb, but overall Metals, he, he read that pressure. Uh, and he was able to get the clutch. Any any thoughts on, on that play yeah, right if there? They, if yeah. he would have stayed there, he probably win the round. Uh, yeah, if you would have said, but that's hindsight. I mean, yeah, we can't, exactly. he didn't know where they where they were. It was just good trades. And uh, uh, then the next round, bro, Vickle makes the fucking play. Yeah, I've never seen some shit like this. Bro, they, his play from Vickle is actually insane. This was actually crazy. Um, I want to go into the 4-1 round just so you guys can see. He drops the bomb in this round, uh, which you, you don't see too often, bro. He, he drops the bomb and he hits a pinch. You see him number four on your minimap. Drops the bomb on the A site and says, fuck it, I'm going for it. He just, I think he just knows that phase had a lot of presence towards mid. So he just kind of read the, read the play. Nah, and knew that this pistol kill was unethical. That, that was insane. insane. That was insane. That pistol kill was fucking crazy. Um, that's, a, that's a heads up play by Javi, though. Yeah. I love that. All right. Great heads up play. I mean, how many times do we see people not drop the bomb? I think it happened with Boston a few times where they would push through with the bomb and, yeah. and die, and then the bombs just dropped in their spawn. Just just the, the play from Vickle to drop the bomb and, and put that pressure there uh, was just a really good play from him. And, of course, Simp is all by himself, and Miami were go, able to go up 5-1 here. Did get a little interesting. Miami trolled a couple rounds, but, I mean, Miami, it was a comfortable map from them. They were able to close it out. Uh, are you worried at all for FaZe that they lost the search? Are you guys worried at all about that or no? Uh, not Absolutely really. Absolutely fucking not, Tom. <laughs> 
Got fucking Lamar and Standy in the window <laughs> making faces. Why right, is well, those guys are the shirt. guys I'm worried about. Oh, <laughs> oh that's not right. That's Slay, right. you worried about them, Pat? I'm worried about that's those up. guys. Who do they play? Can well, let's get the predictions. Yeah, we're going to pull predictions right now. I'll just go to the end of the VOD, Tom. Who do they play? Go to the end of the VOD. I already have it up. Jesus fucking Christ. Man, I already got it up. A nice graphic at the end of the VOD. It's all good. Oh, they do have a nice graphic? Okay, I'll pull up the nice graphic for you, Benji. Okay? You don't got to be an asshole. Let's hit hit the, hit the three dots now. Bro, regain, bro. Regain. You don't want to pick up previous tabs. Okay, I'm the executive fucking producer. You know what I mean? Go fuck yourself. Okay, we'll take a look here. Uh, I think you said Carolina plays Vegas, right? It's no, Miami now. plays Vegas. Or Miami, Miami plays Vegas. Vegas. Carolina oh, plays Ravens. Carolina, Carolina play plays themselves? Ravens? Holy How do they do that? They're, not, not They're playing with Carolina themselves, play, Carolina plays LAG. <laughs> Thieves play Rocker? Oh, uh, Or Boston. Rocker. Or do they play Boston? No, Thieves right. play, yeah. play Boston and Seattle play Rocker. Mm -mm. Let's take a look here, see what's going on. We have Miami Heretics going up against Vegas Legion. LA Thieves going up against Boston Breach. Seattle Surge going up against the Minnesota Rocker. And the Carolina Royal Ravens going up against the Los Angeles Gorillas. We have five matches tomorrow because we also have an elimination round it's two. It's the top side. I talked to Dan Gosteed today. I think it's the top side of the bracket that has an elimination round two. So the Miami Vegas Thieves Boston, the ones playing. Yeah. Yeah. Play tomorrow. Um, I'll be honest. Some people are like, tomorrow's gonna be a hard watch and whatever. I thought today was. Games. I thought today, today was a hard watch. Today tomorrow will be better. I I, be I better. thought today it was hard to find things to talk about today. It was so lopsided. I I felt like it was honestly yeah, just a these skill are actually today. even matches. Yeah, today, and today's they the worst. Lot. Today's the worst day of the weekend. Thursday, hundred percent. Today was hundred percent. Elimination, the elimination Friday. Ones. Elimination Friday is always fun to watch. These matches mean a lot to these teams. This is on top of that. They're elimination games. Like these people are going home. Yeah, I think this solidifies Boston has zero hope. Like even if they win the next <clears> two <throat> or win the next event and go like undefeated, if yeah. they lose here, they're done. I think they're they back to back top fours. I like talked about this briefly on our last flank before, mm -hmm. but like this uh, Carolina versus LAG game is an interesting game simply because these are the two top six consistent land placing teams that we've had at the last two majors, and yeah. one of them is going to go out early, guaranteed. So there will be no double repeats. Uh, yeah, we can we can run through them real quick. Let's do one match at a time. We have Miami Heretics going up against Vegas. I'm personally gonna go with Vegas in this one. Um, I know I know Miami was able to get a map uh, on the board today, but it was an it was a search, so I didn't I didn't read much into it. I think Vegas are coming in are gonna look to shut them down, and I'm not forgetting about Miami's record going into <laughs> this day. I'm not forgetting that they didn't uh, win a map on land. So I'll, I'll go with Vegas. I'll go with the friendship G's. I'll go with my brother Dylan attached and, and those guys over there. But Ben, who do you got? Mm. Jesus fuck, you're addicted to Reddit. Speed run, bro. speed run, speed run. Vegas. Uh... I got Vegas. Don't you got think Vegas? too much. Vegas. I got Vegas. Slayer, who do you got over there, Pat? Uh, it's just tough. No, it's uh, not. <laughs> I'm going to go Vegas, Tom. And I'm actually disappointed that Miami's going to be 1-18 in instead of 0-18. Oh, because They'll, be They'll be 1-17. 1-17? Is that how the math, the math is math? No, right. They'll still be at 1-18. They still have to lose 18 maps. Oh, that's true. That's fair. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, then we got LA Thieves going up against the Boston Breach. I have LA Thieves. I'm going to say 3 1 3 0. Um, Boston have just, uh, they looked like they really showed. They've had their moments, not really. Um, <laughs> it's just been looking really rough from their camp. It just seems like they have no system. They no won game that SD the other day. What you, they had a big moment right there. They won search. They won, that they won, a, they won a map. They yeah. won the search. Um, but yeah, no, I, I definitely think when you watch Boston, they just really struggle with having a system and playing the fundamentals correctly. They, they just don't look like a team right now. And I worry for them when they go up against uh, the LATs tomorrow. But maybe they can turn, uh, prove me wrong and, and get the dub tomorrow. We'll, we'll see if Doug Sensor Martin, the boys over there, Get the job done, but uh, I got LA Thieves 3 1. Ben, who do you got? Uh, LA Thieves 3 0. Same. LA T. 3 0? You got 3 0 2? 3 1? Don't you don't give a fuck? Don't know those. <laughs> Pat, who I, do you got? I got a Boston Breach. Oh, oh I got shit. Them, Dude, I got them, I got them 3 1. Really? I got Boston Why? Breach with the respawn masterclass. Oh. I just got a feeling that this team is so ass that they're going to turn up here for the one time. <laughs> And they're gonna they're gonna perform on land. I don't know. I just got a feeling. This I got a major players. feeling. They need to catch up in the prediction game. That's why you're picking Boston. Or this is your actual. These feeling? next two majors actually, are there. I just, I just feel like look, bro. They went zero and seven, and they had six game five losses where they were pretty good in respawn. Sure, they're gonna get one. I I just got a feeling that they're they're due, and it's gonna be in this series. Fuck. And it's just like thieves to lose here. 
in the it team is. that they should have. They said fuck. It is. It'd be like that. Um, all right, let's go to the next one. We got Seattle Surge going up against the Minnesota Rocker. I'm going to go with Rocker in this one. I, I worry about Rocker a little bit just because of how their team is made. Like, we've talked about their team composition before and kind of how they have, like, two of the same players, like, in both roles. But I think they have more fundamental play than Seattle does. I feel like Seattle just be running, bro. When I watch them play, they're all over the map. Um, so I could see Minnesota breaking that down tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to go Minnesota 3-1, maybe even 3-2. This could go a last map, maybe. Uh, but who do you guys got? We'll go to you, Sam. Who do you I, got? I got Rocker, too. I think they're so slow, and Seattle just sprints at them. I think they're just going to farm them. Yeah, it's just play styles. Like, I think they might be a good counter to them. Uh, what do you think, Chris? I think both these teams are poo-poo caca, and I don't know to pick, but <laughs> oh, I'm Jesus just going to go with Rocker. Pat's going, or fucking Chris going to Sugon tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> ben? I hate both these teams, but I'm picking Seattle just to be different. You hate them. Bro, I just did the like I, I just feel like you you know, whoever hate wins like that in your heart, whoever wins is gonna lose in lose around two, so I just don't really care. So I'm picking Seattle. No, uh, right, and then of course we got the one and only Patrick Price. What do you think, Pat? Um, I just think this rocker team sucks. Don't like to clarify. I also think Seattle suck, but I got Seattle here winning this game right. five. You got Seattle, and then we got the Carolina Royal Ravens going up against the Los Angeles Gorillas. I'm actually going to go with Carolina in this one. I think uh, Carolina, like, they, they have their moments. You definitely could tell that, they're, uh, that they know how to play COD. I think it's just with the top teams, they struggle in the kill department. Um, I think tomorrow with LAG, they'll be able to get the dub. So I'm going to go 3-1 three, three, Carolina, Royal Ravens over LAG. Ben, who do you got? Dorio, Carolina. Same. I got Carolina. Pat, who do you got? Carolina, T. Phil on land. T fell on land. And uh, I got Pat. Fell on land. Uh, who do we all got for? So we pretty much all picked Vegas and Thieves, right? And Pat picked Boston. Who do you guys have then for the, those two matches to win? LAT. Boston match? Sam, I got LAT. LAT, probably. I LAT hope. versus who would play? Vegas, uh, Vegas or, or Boston. Boston. Vegas or Boston, I'd probably say LA Thieves. I'm going to take Vegas if uh, they play LA. Well, it'll be Vegas or Miami. Sorry, not Boston. This with these yeah, players. so I'm saying the winner of the top two series. Yeah, Vegas. I'll, I'll, I'll take Vegas. Pat, the, are you the, picking Boston in the second series, or you think they only get top eight? They would They would play Vegas or Miami, right? Yeah. Um, yep. Vegas smoked them, <clears throat> didn't they, online? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm picking Boston. They didn't smoke them. <laughs> oh, shit. They, <laughs> they, they didn't smoke them. They won game five. <laughs> oh. They won game five, but the respawns were not Oh, Pat believing in the Boston Zero, breach. Zero dropped a kill record on them on Six Star Online. Yeah, yeah, he did. Um, wait, did did uh, did Hydra break the kill streak record today? Oh, he did break it. Yeah. That's shots, pretty typical. Shots he had at thirteen and Paco at fourteen. That's pretty typical. Technically, typical. if you count Vista, he was on a shot. Shut the yeah. fuck yeah. up, bro. Jeez, well, he got. Jeez. I thought it was fifteen. Shut up. Yeah, I thought it was, but he spawned in a Vista. The next map and got two kills before. Nah, he died. they counted it no, at but fourteen. But 14. They got this, they, he got a streak kill. And it didn't. didn't it didn't count it. Yeah, that was weird. That was really weird. I don't know why the streak. Kill, the streak kills should count. It was a fifteen kill streak. Um, so super, uh, super good place from, uh, from Paco and, uh, a good day of matches today. Not really. Those <laughs> matches were kind of terrible. Yeah, today. I fucking lie. They sucked. Um, but we did want to give you guys a quick little recap anyway, just so for people who weren't able to watch the matches, you guys just can get kept up on what kind of what happened and, and who showed out. Um, but pretty much everything went how we thought it was going to go. To be fair, I think the only upset we might have saw t- we thought we could have saw today was LAD's New York and they got both um, and, and, and maps three and four they got absolutely fucking pooped on so yeah, uh, definitely excited to go into the rest of the weekend man we'll obviously keep the watch parties going we got five <coughs> matches tomorrow so we got another long day uh, yep. going tomorrow I know some of you guys want to see like a lot more clips and stuff but you know at events it, it is a lot more matches the days are a lot longer for us. I'll, I'll do the best I can to pull up as many clips as, uh, as possible throughout the weekend, guys, especially Saturday and Sunday. Um, but, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the show nonetheless. I have a question. Yeah, what's up, Pat? Where am I sitting when I get there? Because cause I, I don't see a seat for me. No, we could fit three people on here on the couch, Pat. Yeah. We got This is a big-ass oh, couch. Could sit in, you could sit in a haggy crack on the couch. Yeah, like if I move over to the right and it, we, we, somebody sits on the end. Yeah, I'll sit on the end piece that way. Um, yeah, we also got to get oh, a new lens for whoa, the camera. You, you, you're having me ride middle? <clears throat> nah, Pat, you, you don't like middle? The couch if you'd like. Hey, you don't like the middle, I'm Pat? saying I'm sitting on the end chair. You can sit on the edge of the couch. Yeah, yeah, oh, you can do yeah. that. I'm yeah. just sitting on the couch right now because, <clears throat> you know. 
No okay. puck. Wait, where's? Go, yeah. No, wait, yeah, wait, wait, no puck. Because Ben, Ben, are you nervous? Because he doesn't have land his, record? He he's doesn't have upstairs. He, I'm not he didn't bring his putter downstairs, Pat. Oh, he left Tom, it in the he's room. Nervous because it's on land. Dude. Oh I'm telling man! You. Yeah, okay, oh bro. my god, right, bro. Go. Oh my god. Wait, Ben, are you putting tomorrow? Ben's. I'll be there tomorrow. You just see me on a golf course the last two rounds I played. I've been lights out with the putter. Uh, yeah, yeah, that no, might Ryan, be on the golf Ryan, course. But Ryan, I'm talking about Ryan on can land. back me up. Bro. I had an insane putt when we're Ryan talking about this. We don't care about the green. <laughs> that, that is literally land. That's champs. Nope. An easy fucking also, major. Hey, real quick, for all the Xfinity customers, make sure to check out xfinity.com slash rewards to enter for your chance to win a FaZe Clan X Steel Series gear drop. Signing up is free and easy. So make sure to go to xfinity.com slash rewards if you guys are interested uh, in winning the giveaway. But, guys, we'll be back tomorrow. We got a long watch party tomorrow, so it's going to be a good one. Uh, and we're going to get right back into it, man. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed the watch party, enjoyed the show. Uh, and uh, we're definitely excited to keep this weekend going because uh, I think we all kind of predicted today. So the weekend's only going to get crazier from here on out. There's a homeless man about a, about a fight right here in the window. Look, he's fighting this guy in the car. He's either arguing. Uh, let's fucking keep it going, guys. We'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, go to anchor.fm slash the flank to check out all the audio sites we're on. Go follow at the flank on Twitter. Gert's doing a phenomenal job. Uh, running socials, uh, and then, of course, man, Zuma.gg for the merch. We got new merch that's going to be dropping there soon, so make sure to check it out. Oh, As always, merch. your new merch, Pat. New merch, baby. Ooh, uh, I more, like the old merch. merch. I'm, I'm going to wear it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, but bring it, yeah, bring it over, Pat. We, we would love to uh, see you wearing that, Pat. We would love that. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm... <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to do it for us. Uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, take care. Brush your hair, and we'll see you guys tomorrow on another episode of The Flank, man. Take it easy, Just flick off the camera? Go fuck yeah. yourself, Ben. Bro, what are you doing? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs>